Section 7.1 considered the cumulative distribution function technique for finding the distribution of functions of random variables. Section 7.2 considered the transformation technique for finding the distribution of functions of random variables. We now move to the last section, 7.3, which is known as the moment generating function technique. This is not as general as the first two technique techniques, but it works very, very nicely on sums of random variables. So here is the theorem that drives it. Let x1, x2 up to xn be mutually independent with moment generating functions m sub x sub i of t for i equals 1 to n. Notice that each one of these random variables can have its own separate moment generating function. They have to be mutually independent, but they do not have to be identically distributed. If the random variable y is the sum of these n mutually independent um, random variables, then the moment generating function for y is the product of the moment generating functions for each of the x sub i's. Here is the proof of that result. Since x1, x2 up to xn are mutually independent, the moment generating function of y is m sub y of t is the expected value of e to the ty. Well, that is true by the definition of the moment generating function. Now, if you simply replace y by the sum of the x's, that is by the definition of the random variable y as the sum of the x's, you wind up with this. Well, if you use like base add exponents, but this time in reverse, that's just a little bit of algebra within the expected value operator, you will wind up with the expected value of e to the tx1, e to the tx2, etc. Now, at this point, how is it that we can break the expected value of a product into the product of the expected values. That is only true when you have independence random variables. And since these are mutually independent, that independence result gets used. And each one of these can be identified as the moment generating function of one of the x's. So this returns to the definition of the moment generating function and that right there completes the proof because that's what we have on the right hand side. This theorem gives us a procedure for determining the distribution of a sum and it is as follows. Find the moment generating functions of each one of the x's. Step 2. Calculate the moment generating function of their sum as m sub y of t is the product of their moment generating functions. And third, recognize the distribution of y, which is the sum, um, from its moment generating function. Now you certainly don't have all of the moment generating functions memorized, and neither do I. So there is a table in the book, and that table is table 7.1, and table 7.1 lists for all of the popular moment generating functions, I'm sorry, for all the popular distributions, it lists their moment generating functions. So this third step is perhaps the hardest of all of them. It's not mathematics, it's a little more of a pattern matching. You have to look at this moment generating function of y and determine which distribution it is. Now it may be a distribution that doesn't show up in the table, and in that case it may not be possible for you to get its, um, its distribution or its probability um, density function, for example.